welcome back to another session in dentistry and more today we have a very small topic from oral pathology that is supernumerary teeth supernumerary teeth uh, we know it is a tooth which comes as an addition to the normal dental formula so why it is happening uh, it is uh, mainly due to the disturbances disturbances uh, in the initiation and proliferation stages of tooth development so hope you remember the stages of tooth development the birth stage and the birth stage uh, cap stage and bell stage so the supernumerary teeth results from disturbances during the initiation and proliferation stages of dental development so supernumerary teeth uh, if it is resembling to the adjacent teeth they are classified as supplemental okay if it is having abnormal size and shape and which is not having any resemblance to the adjacent teeth that is known as rudimentary okay so supernumerary teeth are classified based on the morphology okay so morphology uh, they are uh, four types one is conical then the tuberculate supplemental and odontoms next we have theories of supernumerary teeth formation so we have basically four theories the first one is atavism or the evolutionary throwback then the tooth germ dichotomy then the hyperactivity uh, tooth germ dichotomy hyperactivity of the dental lamina and last one is the genetic and environmental factors so let's see one by one first we'll start with the uh, atavism or phylogenetic theory okay this is also known as phylo genetic theory so it's suggested that the occurrence of supernumerary teeth is a regression to the extinct ancestral tissues okay so it is says that it is regression sorry regression to extinct ancestral tissues so based on this phenomena the ancestor mammals have more teeth with three incisors one canine four premolars and three molars in each quadrant of the jaw so since regression is happening these teeth might become a supernumerary teeth so that is a concept of atavism okay so atavism says that regression happens our previous mammals were having more teeth they were having three incisors four premolars and three molars so similarly uh, there are chances of uh, having the same number of teeth or the number of teeth but in a regressed format so that is atavism or phylogenetic theory next we have two germ dichotomy so this uh, theory says that uh, the dichotomy or the splitting of tooth germ happens during the early tooth moment the dental lamina was divided into two parts dental lamina divides into two parts okay uh, sometimes it will be equal or unequal so if it is equal the supplemental tooth will be of same size otherwise it will become a rudimentary tooth so that was a two germ or dichotomy theory so twinning and um, germination all are related to this concept twinning we have learned all this in tooth anomaly germination are part of this two germ dichotomy theory 
The third theory says that the hyperactivity of dental lamina. So once the crown of the permanent tooth has formed, the dental lamina undergoes programmed cell death and degenerates. Okay, so that is an usual thing. It degenerates. Once the tooth has formed, so the formation of tooth is the main role of dental lamina. Once the tooth has formed, it naturally degenerates. And the residues of this undegenerated dental lamina epithelial cells may cause eruption cyst. So if there is any uh, undegenerated dental lamina, it will result in eruption cyst. So this over proliferation or prolonged survival of dental lamina epithelial cells may cause supernumerary tooth formation. Okay, so supposed to be dental lamina is supposed to be undergoing a programmed cell death and degeneration, but sometimes it won't happen so. Sometimes it will not undergo degeneration, not completely, but at some points, some areas, there will be over proliferation or there is long survival of dental lamina epithelial cells, which may cause supernumerary tooth formation. So that is the hyperactivity of dental lamina. And the last theory is about genetic and environmental factors. So more commonly, uh, we can see the supernumerary teeth in the relatives of the affected patients. Uh, they can be transmitted as an autosomal recessive. Autosomal recessive. Or autosomal dominant or maybe X-linked. Autosomal dominant or even X-linked. It is form of inheritance. Okay. So that was uh, about the theories of uh, supernumerality that is atavism, tooth germ, dichotomy, hyperactivity of dental lamina and genetic and environmental factors. So what are the common uh, syndromes associated with uh, supernumerality? They are cleidocranial dysplasia and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So these are the common syndromes associated with supernumerary teeth. Now let's see what are the commonly seen supernumerary teeth. So mostly the maxillary midline supernumerary teeth that is a conical one then maxillary uh, fourth molar maxillary fourth molar then the maxillary para. After that, uh, we have mandibular premolars, then maxillary lateral incisors, mandibular fourth molars, and maxillary premolars. Okay, so that was a uh, sequence of supernumerary teeth: maxillary uh, midline supernumerary teeth, maxillary fourth molar, maxillary paramolar, then mandibular premolar, maxillary lateral incisors, mandibular fourth molar, maxillary premolars. So that was all about uh, supernumerary teeth. We learned about a little bit of its introduction, uh, its classification, its theories, uh, the syndromes associated with and commonly seen supernumerary teeth. So it's very commonly asked short term. The uh, content uh, under these subheadings, the commonly seen teeth, syndromes, the theories, the classification and a little bit about its introduction. Okay. I'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more. Thank you.